Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a MIDI controller to control Reaper's functions. Now, the purpose of this video is to show you all the things we could do with a standard MIDI controller in Reaper. And it doesn't really matter which one, it could be a huge 88 key MIDI keyboard like this, a little mini USB keyboard like this one or even this pad controller that I'm using. The process is pretty much the same. The only thing that really changes is how you organize it based on how you want to work and what functions you want to use. So obviously, we could use these things to play MIDI notes like this, go to our track, put it in record, set our input. I'm using this Arteria beat step, which use all channels. I already have a VST instrument on it right here. So now I could play my MIDI controller like this. Or we could use the controller to control parameters. Like choose the cutoff right here and touch it. Go up here and choose learn. And just move one of the knobs. Reaper sees it. And now we can adjust the filter with that knob. But in this video, I want to focus on controlling Reaper's main functions instead. And the first thing we should know is how to change the MIDI channel on a MIDI controller. For this controller, I can just hold down the channel button and change it with the pads. Right now it's MIDI channel one, but we could hit any of the pads to change it to any of the 16 MIDI channels available. And this is important because this will allow us to create different layers of control. So our keys or pads or knobs can control different things based on the MIDI channel we choose. For example, with MIDI channel one, we could use it just for recording MIDI notes. So when I go into record, I would just set this to MIDI channel one. Then we can use the rest of the channels for Reaper's main functions. So take some time to figure out how to change the MIDI channels on your MIDI controller. So let's start with MIDI channel two. Let's say we want to control tracks one through eight to do volume, pan, solo, and mute. We'll start with volume, go up here to the actions menu, show action list, and then type in track volume CC. And we can see over here, we can set the volume for our tracks by their numbers. Let's start with track one, hit add, and just move any of our knobs or faders. And notice it shows up right here with MIDI channel two. Once again, that's important. As we switch things, it's gonna change their function. Hit OK, and do the same with track two. Move the second knob or fader, shows up right here. And to save time, you could choose this option, which is gonna close the window on input. So we could do this very quickly. Hit the arrow down, hit add, move a knob or a fader, and it closes it each time. And just go through to four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now we can close this window. Let's open up the mixer so we can see this more clearly. Here's our tracks. Now we can move our first fader or knob to adjust that track's volume on two, on three, and so on, making it a lot easier to control our volume. We can do the same thing for pan. Change this to pan. Notice the same thing over here. Move a different set of knobs or faders to quickly set this up. And now we do the same thing with pan. I'll use the second set of knobs 
to control the panning on each track. One, two, and so on. Let's do the same thing using our pads for solo and mute. Just type in toggle track solo. We could see over here, we could toggle the solo for each track. And just do the same thing, but I'm going to do it with pads for one, two, and so on. And now we could solo our tracks with these buttons, or in a keyboard controller, use the keys. Track one, two, and so on. Let's do the same thing for mute. And again, you could flip this around and do mute or solo in a different order, whatever works best for you. Change this to mute, do the same thing over here. Now we can mute one track at a time, just like that. Unmute them, solo them, adjust their volume or their pan. And again, this is just one layer we set up. We could switch it back to MIDI channel one to record MIDI. Or put it on two to adjust these functions. You could adjust more on different MIDI channels. Let's go to MIDI channel three. And here, let's say you're in a situation where you're dealing with more than eight tracks. So you just want to affect one track at a time, as you can't really set up 100 tracks to work with. But you can choose selected tracks. Go back to the action list, track volume CC. And right over here is the same setting, but just four selected tracks. So for this, with MIDI channel three set up, we could choose our first knob to adjust the volume. Notice it's MIDI channel three. Let's do the same thing for pan. Just selected tracks, move this knob or fader, and do the same thing with our pads or keys for solo and mute. Right over here is solo for selected tracks. Hit our first pad. Do the same for mute. Right over here. And now with MIDI channel three selected, we could select tracks like this one, adjust the volume, the pan, solo it, or mute it. And we could do it with any track we select or multiple tracks. So I could select these three, adjust the volume all together as a group, adjust their pan as a group, solo them, or mute them as a group. Because we only used the first set of knobs and pads, we could use the others for more specific things. For example, we could type in toggle track volume, and right over here, we can make the volume envelope visible. Let's add the second pad, and do the same thing for pan. Right here. And then for the third row, let's toggle the track automation modes. Type in touch, and right over here, we could toggle track between touch and trim read modes. Let's add the third pad to this. And now with MIDI channel three active, we could select a track, hit the second pad to see the volume envelopes, the one below it to see the pan envelopes and hide them both one at a time. And with the third pad, let's go to the mixer, Let's select a track, hit the third pad, it changes the automation mode for that track. 
to touch mode. Hit that pad again, switches it back to trim read. So in this mode, we could adjust the volume, the pan, solo, and mute. We could view the volume and pan envelopes and close them and adjust on one track or multiple tracks, the automation mode. So again, it just matters what MIDI channel we choose. Let's create another layer with MIDI channel four. We could use this to view our windows. Let's type in mixer visible, choose this action right here. Let's choose the first pad. Notice it's MIDI channel four. And let's do the same thing for a few other windows. Let's choose master toggle. And we can see right here, it's gonna to toggle the master track visible. Let's use a second pad. Let's open the effects browser with these pads or keys. Right here, show effects browser. We'll use the third pad. Now it's important to remember which pads we select. Although you could label them if you want on your controller. Let's also add one for the Media Explorer. Right here, show and hide it. Let's use the fourth pad. And now, with MIDI channel four chosen, we could hit the first button to see or hide the mixer. See the master track over here, we'll hide it. We could choose tracks, open the effects browser with the third pad, and apply effects to that selected track. And hit the fourth pad to open up the Media Explorer. Hit it again to hide it. And again, you could choose any windows you want, put them on different layers based on MIDI channels, and control Reaper a lot quicker based on how you prefer to work. Let's add a few of my favorites to the same layer. For these bottom pads, let's view and hide the grid. Toggle the grid, options, toggle grid lines. Let's use the lower first pad. And let's add to this by changing the grid lines spacing, which is no keyboard shortcut for, but we could still make one with our controller. Grid adjust, and we can adjust it by half and by two, or double it. So for this one, we'll choose a second pad on the second row. And for this one, the third one on the second row. And now, if we want to see our grid lines, hit that pad, make the grid lines smaller or bigger with each pad we set up or hide them just like this. And we could also use the knobs on this layer to adjust the zoom both horizontally and vertically. Type in adjust horizontal zoom, choose it right here, move one of the knobs or faders, change this to vertical, add another knob to this one, And now we can adjust that first knob to zoom in horizontally, in or out. And to do it vertically, do the second knob, up or down. So we can zoom in very quickly by moving the mouse where we want to go, zoom in horizontally or vertically to get as close as you want. So again, you're going to set this up how you prefer. I just wanted to show you a few ideas. And as you can see, there's a ton of actions in the action list right here. And every one of them can be controlled through MIDI with our MIDI controller. So that's pretty much it. That's how to use a MIDI controller to control 
Reaper's functions. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.